Woo. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday, everyone. I am going to be honest and transparent and let you know that today's topic is not my preferred or normal topic. I am extremely, excuse me, I'm here um, sharing the, the broadcast. I am definitely nervous about this topic because it's a Saturday and we just finished celebrating June 19th. Juneteenth, and I thought to myself, who in the world is going to tune into a Saturday broadcast about the spirit of depression and how to start a conversation? But I know that this topic is important and that I needed to come on and share. So if you are tuning in, I invite you to pull up a chair grab you a cup of water and uh, let's have some discussion and conversation. So first I wanted to start with this disclaimer. I'm definitely not a therapist. I am not a clinical psychologist or a certified licensed psychiatrist. Those are primarily the respected fields that address topics such as these. But what I am is an ordained minister for the past 20 years. This December 2020 will be 20 years and a licensed certified life coach for the past 11 years. This June 30th will mark my 11 year anniversary as a certified life coach. So. I am a woman, an individual who prays and hears from God. And when I receive the experience that I'm going to share with you and revelation about this topic, I was encouraged to share. So again, I've made my disclaimers and I shared with you my experience. And I have to let you know the burden that's on me to share this topic with you. I'm nervous, never talked about it before, but if you hang on with me, I'm going to ride through this. I don't intend for this broadcast to be longer than 30 minutes, if 30 minutes, because I am truly going to share with you precisely and exactly what I've heard and experienced. And God has always and is always invited in the midst of these sessions to speak directly and add uh, context to the topic. So I want to be led by his Holy Spirit today. I see a couple of people here. Hi, Miss Sandy. It's so good to see you. I see that you're in another part. Is that is that still the state of Florida here? The Florida Keys. Hey, Ms. Shambri, how are you doing? I need to be here. Come on, come on in. This burden that I have to share, this topic, I want to share and just be transparent. Hi, Ms. Monique, how you doing, my sister? I hope that all is well with you. All right, so let me start from the top. Yesterday was Friday, June 19th, right? And like many of you, I had a full agenda set from morning. Fridays are my off days, an opportunity to relax, get caught up with personal business, also with uh, clientele, and then have a, a personal life, spend some time with family and friends and uh, do social activities. So like many of you all, 
Juneteenth is already booked and I'm talking about had some events to go to, some sharing, some learning, some eating, some outings and all of that good stuff. So I had planned actually to sleep in yesterday, which was Friday, but I got up probably about 7.10. So when I got up 7.10 Friday morning, it felt like just a usual day. I'm going to walk you all through how we're getting to this topic today my personal experience. This is the most transparency I'm going to tell you I've ever offered any of my live talks. So please bear with me. I'm going to navigate through this and we're going to talk about the spirit of depression. For a lot of people, I, I thought about whether or not to use the terminology spirit because I don't want to spook people out. I may think, make people think that, oh, she's getting so deep or, you know, I can't, I can't follow this topic. No, when I talk about spirit, as I'm going to deliver in this message, non-physical form. Everything is spirit before it's physically manifested. The chair was a spirit. It was a thought. It was an idea. Right? The things that you wear first start, starts with a thought, spirit. So I'm talking about a spirit. I'm talking about a thought. I'm talking about an emotion. I'm talking about a feeling. I'm talking about something that's not tangible and not, and not physical. Depression is a spirit. It starts with a thought. So I'm going to, I'm going to take you there. But Friday morning, I got up about seven, seven, 10 AM and I jumped on our prayer call. We have a morning prayer call with deeper fellowship. And I'm happy to share that with you all towards the end of the broadcast, because I want to stay in the flow. We got up, I got up at seven, 10 and I jumped on the prayer call. So I called in and got through the prayer call and it was a powerful session. It's Monday through Fridays. And I hung up the phone and I, like I said, Friday's my off day. So I had a full day to get some breakfast and just begin the day, begin June 19th. I mean, you know, it was, it's a special day. So I, I, I was ready to go. Y'all, after I finished cooking my breakfast, no joke, I felt this overwhelming dark feeling come over me as if it was a pull for me to get into my bed. This is the second time I've had this dark feeling before. And again, I don't need anybody to get spooked out. Just walk with me. If you're uncomfortable, I'm going to encourage you to lean in with me because I am uncomfortable uh, because lots of times, you know, topics like these, people are leery of wondering, you know, did it really happen? But if I'm bringing it to you, it happened. And um, the Lord said that I need to share it because that's why he gave me the experience. So, so walk with me here. A deep, dark, overwhelming feeling came over me after I finished eating. And it, it was a pull. It, it felt like energy was being sucked out of me. It was a pulling dark force. And immediately I wanted to be left alone. I didn't want to be bothered with anybody. I didn't want to go anywhere. It was not my original feeling. Remember I said I'd had this experience before. The, the, the first time was when I had, when I experienced a car accident in 2006. That's, that was a time when uh, in that car accident, I, would li I was literally dead in a, in a dark place and death you know, surrounding me. So I'm very familiar with that feeling, with that spirit, spirit of death, darkness, because that is something I have experienced in my lifetime. So when this happened yesterday, the first thought I had is what is about to happen and what is going on? So I had the thought to pray, but the feeling that came over me was so dark. It was so heavy. It was overwhelming. And I just felt sleepy. So if you're listening to me and I am describing those moments when you go into a deep, dark, depressing hole, I know how it feels. Not just from yesterday, but like I said, I have been there before with a car accident when I was and walked through the, the, the valley of death, literally. So the feeling that came over me yesterday, I had been there before. This time, I didn't know why and what was happening because I was in the comfort of my home. No tragedy, nothing had taken place. 
but it was a feeling. Here's what that feeling caused me to want to do. I just wanted to cover my head and sleep. And the whole time I was thinking to myself, this isn't me. Like, where is this coming from? Where is this coming from? I see you, Shambria. I, I, I had no idea where this was coming from. This is this wasn't faith. I mean, it out of nowhere. So I knew it wasn't God sent. I knew that it was not an extension of my thoughts. It was not an extension of uh, places I'd been. It wasn't an extension of relationships. It was just out of the blue, just out of nowhere. This deep, depressing, dark cloud wanted me to think that I had nothing to look forward to. Those were the thoughts that automatically started going through my head, like depressing thoughts. That's how I know that depression leads to suicide. And as I started to prepare to just share this with you, I just want us today to start the conversation. I may not have all the answers. Uh, you may experience discomfort, whether you're watching it live right now or you're watching the replay. It's time to have a conversation about the spirit of depression because it is real. And for my super religious people, I know God is realer, but I am talking about this particular spirit and what I experienced yesterday. And I'm going to be transparent and I'm going to be honest with what I experienced because I, I am relating to those who's had similar experiences like what I experienced yesterday. So back to me wanting to pull the covers over my head out the blue no impending danger, nothing was going on in the safety of my home. God, what is this? Now, I did some research on just, you know, suicide and depression and, and things of, of that nature and just learned that a lot of children and young adults deal with depression that eventually leads to suicide. And I saw in my study that a lot of school age children around the grades of nine through 12 deal with uh, mental illness, depressing thoughts that eventually leads to suicide. So I want to do a plug here for the parents listening and just ask you, have you had a conversation or are you checking on your school age children? Due to uh, COVID-19, they've been out of school for months now. Um, some have been experiencing distance learning, so a lot of time on the computer. And I know parents, you still have to go to work. You still have to uh, make, a, make a living and provide for your children. So I know in some situations, your child may have been home for extended hours of time by themselves or possibly with a loved one who may not have had a lot of time to uh, watch over your child and give them that undivided attention and care like they would have had if they were in school or if they were in your, you know, in your care. So I want to put a plug right there and say, you know, parents, make sure you're checking on your children, you're talking to them and you're engaging with them and you're just making sure like a, a well-being, you know, check that everything is okay. So just want to plug that there because this is a high time for depression and also suicide. So uh, that's very important. So here I am, I made it into the bed now, right? And this is how I'm feeling, wanting to pull the sheets over me, knowing that this is not me. What is this? What's going on? I wanna make one point and one point only, and I know I'm very serious with this uh, live feed, but this is the one point I want to make about the spirit of depression and starting the importance of starting the conversation. Engage in active combat to fight those thoughts, because as I was in that encounter, as I was in that experience, those were merely thoughts that were triggering feelings. You don't have anywhere to go. Just sit in for today. You really don't need to be anywhere. No one's going to miss you today. And the whole time in the back of my head, I'm fighting like, this is not me talking, but it started as thoughts. 
And then that feeling of heaviness, that overwhelming, suffocating feeling then follows. So the point I want to make to, to help anybody who's experiencing that, and I see your comments um, here when, Sandy, you're, you're saying, hey, I, I experienced that the other day, a few weeks ago. Um, you started praying in the Holy Spirit and it left. That's exactly the same thing I did. Shambria, I don't know what you did when you experienced that, but I hope with what I shared today, it helps you and equip you to overcome, again, that that feeling and those thoughts when when it overwhelms you. So my point is you have to engage actively to fight those thoughts. It is a spirit. It is a thought and it just strikes at you and it tries to overwhelm you and make you heavy so that you can accept it as your own. Don't fall for it. Don't do it. Reject it. Spiritually speaking, rebuke it and then invite the presence of God into the situation. Whatever you do, do not accept those thoughts because it's not yours. So as I'm there, cover myself, think in isolation. Do know that isolation is a false sense of security from other people. It's not real. You can't survive in isolation. If you're thinking to yourself, nobody's going to miss me today. You know, I, I don't have to be anywhere today. That That's a lie. And you're not safer being wherever you are at the time you're having those thoughts. That's not a safe place for you. You want to get out of those emotions, negative emotions, and those feelings, okay? So I wanna share with you what happened with me. How did I get out of that? I don't know how long it was, but it felt like it, eternity. So I'm gonna give you what I believe the Lord has given to me to share with you three ways to combat depression. Again, certification, is it in clinical psychology, psycho psychiatry, being a psychologist, a therapist, but I am who I am by the grace of God. And I have my experiences and I'm sharing one that I had with you yesterday, which involves the spirit of depression. So take it, utilize it, share it, whatever we can do to help each other out and start this conversation because we need to have this conversation. It's killing our children. Uh, it's killing our, our men. Uh, of all races and colors are impacted uh, by this depression, which oftentimes lead to suicide and death. Number one, I wanna encourage you to gain control of your thoughts. Gain control of your thoughts. When you feel that overwhelming heaviness, darkness, those thoughts that are just, you know, not light, it's dark, it's, it's, it's just evil and it makes you feel feel horrible. Think about ways that you can help others because you have a reason to live. You remember that thought I was saying, you don't need to go anywhere today. Just stay here, you know, miss all of the activities. I couldn't do that because in the back of my head, I'm thinking to myself, what, what are you talking about? I have too much to live for. I have family that I love, friends that I love spending time with. I have a ministry that I love helping people. I have a career that has purpose. What are you, and the whole time my, my, just, my spirit has just come back and I'm like, lies, lies, lies. But again, I'm experiencing this because I believe it was just important for me to experience this. And trust me, I believe God, you just, God trusts some people with certain levels of experiences because he knows if he gives that to you, once he brings you through it, you could share with someone else and help them. So I think that was my day yesterday. That's that's the only explanation I have for this. So think about the ways that you help others. You do have a reason to live. You will be missed if you um, don't show up for the day, show up for your children, show up for your spouse. Most of all, show up for yourself. Don't believe the lies. It is a lie. Immediately flood your mind with these thoughts and allow it to pull you out of that cesspool of negativity. I am worth it. I am important to myself, to my children, to, to my friends, my family, to what God has called me to do. 
Now, some people may say immediately just go in to prayer and just, you know, get up and pray. It works like that for you. God bless you. But you know what I had to do yesterday just to feel a ray of light? I had to change my thought. It, those thoughts were not my own. So like I said, what I felt, that engulfing feeling, it started with me first negating that thought. That is a lie. It's lots for me to do. As a matter of fact, it's lots for me to do today. I'm not just going to sit here and feel this. But again, I experienced it. While feeling this overwhelming feeling of darkness and hopelessness, I began to think this is what I was thinking. And I wrote everything down once this encounter ended because it was it was scary and it was very uncomfortable. I was thinking to myself, that's a lie because I love being with my family. And as it was, you know, the thought was just like, just stay here. Nobody's going to miss you. I, I was thinking to myself, I love supporting my friends. I started thinking to myself, I love the programs and the work that I am um, doing in the community. And then I also thought to myself, man, I love how I'm helping mothers heal after the loss of their child. And I began to think I have something to, to live for and to conquer in today alone. So if you feel, and if you've been there where I'm talking about, you don't have to give me an amen, but you have to dispel those lies with the truth. You have to overcome fear with faith. Scripturally, there's a scripture in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 that says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I heard myself reciting this scripture. And listen to me, that paralyzing, overwhelming, suppressing darkness had to back up. When I started thinking and reciting the word of God, when I started changing my thoughts differently, I had to experience a breakthrough before I could break through and get up. So combating this feeling, this experience, I'm telling you, it's uncomfortable to talk about, but it's necessary. And it starts with shifting your thoughts and inviting number two, get up and pray. Invite the spirit of the Lord into that arena. Don't stop until you feel a breakthrough. Why? Because the word of God says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. That word liberty means freedom. That scripture is 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. So when you invite the spirit of the Lord in that situation, it dispels darkness. It dispels that heavy weight and those heavy feelings and thoughts. So again, if you ever been there and you are there, whether it is just you're having those mild thoughts, you're having those feelings and um, you've been there before, some more severe than others, change your thoughts. You are important. You do matter. We do need you. You have something to live for. First of all, live for yourself. Live for your children if you have children. Live for what God has called you to do here on this earth. Your life is too precious, too great a price has been paid for your life. To be depressed, to give in to darkness, to think that you're not worth it. Those are all lies change your thought patterns, change them immediately. Whether it starts with affirmations, writing down who I am and what God has called you to be and what you have yet to live for in this earth, you do just that. But I'm speaking to somebody today to let you know you have a purpose and a reason to live. Don't give in to dark thoughts, dark feelings. It starts light. You don't need to be there. Ah, uh, nobody wants to hear from you today. Ah, uh, what you have to say is not that important. The devil is a liar. And the more you give into those thoughts, the more it has root and it becomes a stronghold and it's there in your life and it's building upon building upon building of negative negativity. And it just becomes a cesspool and it just, it just engulfs you deeper. So I want to encourage you to change your thoughts. If you're feeling depression, if you're feeling depressed, even if it happens from time to time unannounced, it's not you. It's a lot going on in this world today. 
a lot that can trigger and make someone want to be numb to it all. Some of it is just so traumatic and painful. You just possibly don't even want to wake up and deal with it, or you don't want to hear anything. You don't even want to watch your news. Guess what? You have to be active, living and alive in today's society to contribute and to do what God has called you to do. I'm understanding now more and more talking to you why I needed to go live today. It's a lot of darkness in this world. It's a lot that's happening. Unexplainable things. You don't have to be a byproduct of what's going on and show your response to it through negativity. All of that stuff is, gets into your spirit. It weighs you down. It holds you back and it paralyzes you. It causes you to be inactive, nonchalant, don't care anymore. That can't be the stance that you guys have. We need everybody to be active actively praying, actively seeking God, actively communicating and talking. So important. Don't allow depression to slip in at such a time as this. We need you to be active. All right. So if you feel and you find yourself in moments like what I described happened to me um, Friday morning, just yesterday, gain control of your thoughts now. Replace them with healthy thought patterns. You have to do that. And most definitely get up and pray. Get up and pray. Don't stop praying until you feel a break. Sandy, you just mentioned that you had that experience just the other week. And you got up and, and you prayed and you you felt it lift up. Mine is a big fight. I could just, um, riding down the road and my thoughts go left. It makes me forget where I was. Yeah, yeah, it happens. It happens. It tries to sidetrack your day. Uh, seriously, it does. And it's out the blue because guess what? Those are the things that's happening in our world right now. Lots of things that's happening in our world. Lots of negativity is being unveiled. Uh, we're actively talking about COVID-19, a viral infectious disease that's claiming the lives of um, over a hundred thousand individuals now, loved ones, family members, that's, that could be very, very depressing, unannounced. Um, a lot of people are, are battling other diseases as well. And then now we have this racism, which is another disease that's just festering and it's just overflowing right now. And I believe a, a trick of the enemy is to make everybody think this is too much to bear. I cannot breathe. Listen, yes, you can. And we need you to breathe. That was one man's experience that we stood with him. We supported him. We continue to support him and those who have gone through the tragedy and the traumatic experiences. But you can breathe. You have to breathe. We need you to breathe. Even if it's one breath at a time, one day at a time. So people, I need you to, to be steadfast, unmovable, and always in prayer. Stay prayed up because this is spiritual warfare that we are dealing with each and every day. So after I changed my thoughts and I began to replace those negative thoughts that were flooding my mind or trying to flood my mind, I was actively combating in my mind first. The second thing I did, like Sandy said, I got up and I just broke into a prayer. And I was praying so heavily and I asked God, I was like, why am I feeling this? What, what was that? I'm literally like, God, what was that? I heard God say, second time God has spoken clearly to me. The first is notated in my book. The second time, which is associated with my car accident, I wrote about it in a memoir. But the second time, this is the second one. I wanted you to experience what depression feels like. Oh, okay. Immediately, I started to pray. We call it warfaring in the spirit. I started to pray and I cried. I don't remember crying so hard. Yesterday morning, I cried. I cried for anybody battling and feeling that spirit of depression like what I felt that morning. I prayed and I cried for anybody that has and demonstrates signs of depression. I cried for people who are currently suffering from mild depression. And more importantly, I prayed for those people who have severe depression. 
I prayed people because what I felt yesterday, no human being needs to feel that. And I could not imagine if someone didn't have the strength and been going through so many of those episodes back to back to back. And especially in a season like this, when our spirit is tired and when we're weary and when we're just trying to hang on with dear life, I could not imagine that person going through and being hit like I was yesterday morning and coming out victoriously. It could have ended differently for somebody who's more sus susceptible and somebody who was more vulnerable. I would not wish that on my worst enemy. So I cried and I prayed and I said, Lord, you wanted me to experience this for a reason. And the next thing God said to me, he then said, I want you to talk about it. So I am talking about my experience. If you're just tuning in, I want you to catch the uh, replay, but I'm talking about my experience with the spirit of depression. Now, I'm not afraid to talk about it. I'm not scared to talk about it. I was hesitant because I'm not an expert in this field, but um, I know when God is speaking and I know when God needs a clear message to get through and I know when he chooses me to deliver that message. I was thinking, Lord, can you give me something more fun? Like, can I talk about some fun stuff? Like, why do I always have to talk about these tough topics? Like, I want to be fun and cool. I ain't going to have no friends after all of this. But God said, I want you to talk about it. And I am here to talk about it because my heavenly father says he needs to start communicating to some people and he wanted to use me to do that. So I'm just a willing vessel and I'm here today, y'all. And um, I'm delivering to you all exactly what the Lord has delivered to me, dealing with the spirit of depression. So again, if you found yourself in examples of where I uh, provided, Shambria says, doesn't feel good at all. I'm still there. I'm praying for you, Shambria. Um, you know, I'm happy to reach, you know, feel free to reach out to me, Shambria. I'm happy to talk with you. Um, again, um, I, I'm just who I am and I want to uh, make myself uh, available. So feel free to inbox me. I'm happy to talk with you. I'm happy to pray with you at any time. So feel free to do that as well. But I believe that God is going to give you the grace to overcome. And I believe this message is definitely for you. And it's for those who are listening. That is where you are as well, or have been having similar thoughts and feelings from time to time. So I'm just bold enough to bring it to, to light and not care how anybody judges or considers me the vessel in this opportunity where God is using me. So he knows I'm not big on people's impressions. So that's another reason why I believe I'm here. Change your thoughts, rebuke, cast down, replace those thoughts of negativity with thoughts of love. You are important. You are necessary. We need you. God has a purpose. Life is not over yet. All right. Once you re replace those thoughts, get up and pray. Don't stop praying until you feel a breakthrough. I told you I warfared yesterday for a very long time, cried, prayed for anybody who felt for whatever duration what I felt. I don't know the window of time that I felt it in yesterday. Number three, I want to encourage you to seek help. I want to encourage you to seek help. Surround yourself first and foremost with loving, healthy relationships. No man can survive on an island just by himself. So you want to make sure you surround yourself with loving, healthy relationships. People who are not judgmental, who's not going to judge you. Girl, you deal with that? Something wrong with you. Man, I can't believe. That's why a lot of people are silent about this spirit of depression and them dealing with it because they don't want to be judged. They don't want to be perceived as weak. They don't want people to think that they're just mentally ill and something is ill wrong with you. But like I said, I'm an individual who's bold enough to come to the light with this, share my experience because God need to reach you to tell you it's time to get some help. Number three, I encourage you to develop a relationship with God and his holy word, because when I was in that mood and in that 
spirit and feeling that I was feeling yesterday, the word of God was flowing fluidly through my mind. And upon scripture, upon scripture, I was breathing, I was speaking the name of Jesus, and I was just praying and thinking thoughts that was edifying my spirit, that was lifting me up. And it was like every thought was dragging me out of that feeling and emotion. Every thought was just pulling me when I started reciting the word of God. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind where the spirit of the Lord is there's liberty, you know, and I was just praying and praying and we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, wickedness in high places. Let me tell you that scriptural prayer broke through that spirit of darkness. It had to leave. Don't know where it went, but it ain't here. Don't need it to return either because God needed me to deliver this word to you. So Build your relationship with God and his holy word. It is powerful, powerful. You need covering. You need God's protection. If you are depending on science, there's no science without God. There is no science without God. Or you may be taking medicine or fear being, you know, prescribed meds. Listen, it may help with the symptoms. But God can heal you. Only God can heal you. That's what I'm hearing. Only God can heal you and deliver you. When you think about seeking help, there are religious counselors who you can speak with. Not every pastor is able to speak to this particular area. Everybody has an area of expertise, but don't assume that somebody is just going to be able to help you. Don't do that. Pray and ask the Lord to lead you in the right direction. He'll, he won't lead you astray. So when you're seeking help, think about God, send me someone whom I could speak with, show me, you know, speaking with my pastors, religious leaders, God, uh, you may need to speak to your general physician who then could refer you to special services, a psychiatrist, um, clinical psychologist, or even a therapist. So, so pray about it. If you're in this season that you know this is a struggle, this is a battle you've been engaged with time upon time, it's time to get help. Who knows when you that will you will experience a vulnerable moment where you won't be as strong. So seek help if you are experiencing what I shared with you whether it be in a thought pattern or an, ex an example of just, you know, wanting to cover your head and not be active in the world because we need you. God needs you. Your, your life is not over yet. You have great purpose. So I just want to leave you with these important resources and recap on this. The word of God says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. And I believe this is important to share with you because um, you got to stay in God. You got to stay in God. You, you, you have to. This is a dark world. Hey, Miss Lori, this is a dark world that we're living in. You got to stay covered and protected by God. A lot of us like to go out there and just do our own thing, just live our lives how we want to live it. No accountability. You don't answer to nobody. You just, you, you, you just who you are. There is no protection in that. You got to live a life submitted to God. And I know I'm coming hard, but I'm, I'm delivering this as God is speaking this to me. And I know he's speaking to someone either in the live or in the replay. Again, I'm not the expert in this field. God gave me the experience. That experience was to, so that I can share this encounter with you, with some, some steps to help you. Remember to change your thinking because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's Proverbs 23, verse seven. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. That's Matthew 12, verse 34. So I want you to change your thinking. Get deep into the word of God. Develop your relationship with God through prayer, through reading his word, through spending devotional time with him as you would with any healthy relationship. God isn't asking for more than you give currently to anyone else he's asking you to be priority and priority could look in a space of time like the first 5 10 15 minutes of your day the middle of the day the end of the day whenever god's ready to speak to you availing yourself prioritize him yeah 
Another great book is uh, a good resource that you could read is The Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Myers. It's one of her best selling books. I've read this book probably about 10 years ago. It may have been around my accident that happened in 2006, but um, this book is very resourceful. It gives you the word of God, lays out scriptures, give you um, good resources, a wealth of information to let you know it's, it, the battle starts in your mind. It's a great resource uh, to have. As you are seeking help, okay, uh, surround yourself with a congregation of believers, whether that be family, friends, faith, building, sharing, and lots and lots of prayer. This Saturday afternoon, I was invited to be on a panel of um, praying leaders, spiritual leaders, ministers that was basically praying for the world and praying for a move of God. It was not advertised. It was one of those things. Let's get together. Stop all the talking and pray. So I thank God for Pastor Andre Neal, who had that vision, New Genesis Ministries, and he gathered us together and we did some serious praying, y'all. So make sure that you're connected to faith builders, uh, a ministry, an organization of believers who can pray with you, who could encourage you and lift you, a pastor, a spiritual counselor, someone who could be there and you could talk to concerning uh, these times. If you are up early in the morning around the seven o'clock morning or even at night around nine, I invite you to uh, join the Deeper Fellowship prayer line. I make it my priority to, to be a part of the prayer line to, to pray with a body of believers and then also hear what God is doing and hear what God is saying through uh, faith leaders as well. And that's through Pastor William McDowell, my pastor at uh, Deeper Fellowship. Uh, the number is 853. I'm going to just plug this into the um, chat here, but I also... share it with you. It's 857-232-0476. So that's the prayer line every morning, 7 a.m. to 7.15 a.m. And then 9 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. The number is 857-232-0476 and the code is 493930. So save that, plug it in, be a part of the prayer call. It's open to everybody. It's international. We have people from all parts of the country that's calling in and praying with us. Um, there's organizations out there as well. We're, we're all mature adults. If you take some time to uh, do some research, talk to your doctor, talk to your uh, general physician. If there you feel you're at a stage where you need some certified uh, therapists, uh, to counsel you or a counselor or need to speak with a psychologist or psychiatrist, you can be referred and, you know, those types of services are um, available through insurance as well. So if it's about that time, it's about that time. Get you some help. It's nothing wrong with you, but we want to make sure that um, you're living a victorious and a triumphant life. And let me tell you, the spirit of depression has been revealed and what i felt that friday morning at 7 about 7:45 i wouldn't wish on anybody and i really want to thank those who were transparent here to share you, your experiences and to say hey this is real i've had this experience in my personal life before and either i'm still struggling with it or this is what i over this is what i did to overcome it so thank you for your transparency. It took a lot for me to share this again with you all, but I thank God uh, that he gave me that faith and that strength to do it. I can't promise you that more sessions like this will come, but as the Lord delivers it into my spirit and uh, shares with me that he wants me to continue in the vein, of these conversations, I will do that. I do currently offer a class, Get Unstuck and Stay That Way. And um, if you're stuck in depression and you're stuck in this particular area of your life, I'm inviting you to be a part of that course. It does start next week, Sunday. And uh, it's a seven-day course. It's a lot of coaching and support from me. And I believe that's June the 28th. All you have to do is text. 321 
and um, I will make sure that I connect you to the Get Unstuck curriculum. It is um, through online coaching. We have two conference uh, session, live coaching sessions and uh, a full curriculum. And I do believe that uh, this is something that can help if you found yourself in that um, pattern, pattern of behavior and thinking. So I will plug that here if that's something that you feel can help you as well. I can work with you for the next seven days in that particular area. Last thing. So I shared with you guys just the spirit of depression. It's time to have that conversation about it. It is real. People around you that you may not know can be suffering from this silent, deadly killer that eventually can lead to, if it's not help sought out to suicide and other um, detrimental outcomes. But God is here to prevent that. He's here to bring an attention and awareness to it and say it's time to deal with it and surrender it to him and combat this thing. You don't have to live your life in isolation. You do not have to feel like you're not wanted. You're not cared about. Those are all lies. You are important. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. You don't have to be alone. You don't have to feel alone. You don't have to live alone. There's people that God has placed in your life that can be an ear that can help you. He's given this burden to me to share with you from the experience that I had personally. So he's saying, faith, I need you to reach somebody. And that's why I'm live. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I shared, if you've had those experience, get control of your thoughts, cast down those negative thoughts, get out of that cesspool of negativity. Replace it with positive thoughts, affirmations, knowing who you are. You definitely want to get up, stay up, prayed up. Don't give in to falling back. If you feel that you are going to seek some help, get some help from professionals, get some help from God, seek God, spend some time with him and get your prayer life built up because we are living in some serious times right now. And we need everybody alive and living and walking in their purpose each and every day. So if you're on this live feed and you may say to yourself, I, I don't struggle with that. That's not my issue. I invite you to share this. I invite you to talk to and just be someone who an individual can talk to. So that's all you have to do. Be someone who someone who is feeling depressed can look at you in their life and they can say, hey, I think I could talk to this person because they're non-judgmental, you know, they hold secrets very well. And um, I know that they love and they care about me. So be that person that someone can talk to. If you don't struggle with this um, spirit or uh, situation, I encourage you to be someone that someone else could talk to. And I'm, I'm going to kind of wrap this up with this example. I shared with you what happened um, yesterday, Friday morning, that's prompting this video, right? Uh, three weeks ago, an individual called me and they wanted to talk to me about mental illness and depression. It's as if God is saying, daughter, I got some work in this particular field for you because somebody out the blue texted me and say they needed to talk with me about mental their mental illness and depression and they were just typing away and they were sending me information and they were emailing me and they were doing everything i politely reminded the person hey remember i am a life coach minister i'm not a licensed you know therapist psychologist psychiatrist you know and after i communicated that information they said oh yes i understand i i remember you know what god told me he said pick up the phone and call them no matter what, I cared about that person enough to at least, if they were trying to confide in me, I didn't have to, you know, diagnose them or, you know, prescribe any medication. I didn't have to do anything out of my field, but I was able to be an ear for that person to talk and know that they were, they had someone who can listen to them. And that person and I talked for about maybe 45 minutes to an hour. And all I did was listen responded when the person shared information and surprisingly i had things to share with them that actually helped them and that's what they said to me 
thank you for picking up the phone and caring enough about me to just listen to me. And then also the things that you shared with me, I believe that I could use it to help me. So again, an opportunity weeks ago presented itself and all I had to do was be in position and be someone that that person believed can listen to them or they can talk to. And that person has since told me that they're doing much better and they're feeling much better. So if you're that person, you may say, this is not me. This is not for me. I'm good. Well, wonderful. Be good for somebody else. Be resourceful and helpful and a good listener for somebody else. Be welcoming for somebody else. And if you feel or sense that someone is down, not having a good day, ask them, is everything all right? I've been noticing that, you know, you may not have been talking a lot. You probably haven't been around a lot. So spend some time just, you know, inquiring about your loved ones, your family, your spouse, your friends, your children's uh, co-workers well-being. Hey, how are you today? Is everything okay? And you don't have to have all of the answers, but you could be a voice. You could be an ear. You could be a hand that could, could comfort them. You could walk with them. You could say, hey, I'll help you find someone to help you. And most definitely the first thing you could do is take that person to the Lord in prayer. So you're actually much more equipped than you think you are. Um, the Lord definitely showed me that I was, and um, I trust him. And I know he's doing some amazing things. And I want to thank him for, you know, allowing me to experience what I did and giving me an opportunity to be a vessel that he communicates through directly to the people he is trying to um, reach today. So the spirit of depression, it's real. It's time to start and have that conversation. It's killing people. Um, it's manifested in severe ways and um, it's not healthy. And we need to be around to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. We have yet lots of things to live for. You are loved and um, your life is worth it. So smile, take some time for yourself, nourish yourself, listen to this video again, and then again, and then again, keep it, save it, uh, revisit it. And if I could be of any assistance to you, feel free to reach out to me. My number is in the, um, the feed here. I am happy to be an ear. I'm happy to be an encourager, which is a gift God has given to me, and I'm happy to pray with you, most of all, if you find yourself in this situation. But do not be ashamed. I feel some people watching may think, well, I'm just ashamed because it shouldn't be me. I'm bigger than that. No, it's usually the ones who are the biggest and the strongest and doing stuff for everybody else that could fall and slip into slight depressions, especially if you don't have people in your life that's pouring back into you. So I'm talking to a different crowd right now. I feel it. So I'm going to lean in. And I'm going to go there. It's usually the strong ones. It's usually the high achievers. It's usually the ones who's helping everybody else that at your most vulnerable moment, you can, you, you too can slip into a depressing state where you're wondering who's going to help me. How can I get out of this situation? God, where are you when I need you? And you could turn all of that power and all of that strength inward. But today, God is setting you free because he wants you to change your thoughts. Remember who you are in him. Get closer to him. Get closer to his word and pray like lives depended on it. Pray for yourself. Pray for others. Pray for your children. Pray for the things you love. Pray for your vision. Pray for the purpose that you still have. Continue to pray. And as you do that, you'll continue to move closer and closer to the light, to God's light, to lighten your spirit, to feeling love, and to feel that you are not in this alone. So I am praying for you right now. I'm going to offer a prayer as I feel um, led to do so by the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to ask God just to intervene and to help you in this season of your life. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, this opportunity to, um, to learn and to grow and to be uh, the, the, the man, the woman, the girl, the boy that you've called us to be. 
in every facet and aspect of life. So right now I'm lifting up those individuals that have struggled with depression. They've struggled with feeling empty, this spirit of emptiness and darkness and fear and self-doubt and struggle to find purpose and reasons uh, that they should live and be alive. I pray for them right now. And I pray your Holy Spirit and your presence will dispel those lies. I pray, Lord God, that you will encompass them with your love and that in their darkest moment, God, they will find safety and refuge in you. I pray, Lord God, that you will remind them of their purpose in you and why you've called them and why you've birthed them and, and what they still have left to do. And God, let that drive and fuel them, God, to want to seek help, to want to move forward and to not give up. God, I pray for them today that's listening, that if they are at a place where they need extra help, that they not be ashamed, but they reach out uh, for that help, whether it's through their local pastors, they talk to a friend, uh, a licensed professional, but give them the courage to reach out for themselves and do something nice for themselves, love themselves, treat themselves as good as they treat other people. God, I pray for them in their struggle, in their weak, weakest moment and most vulnerable moment that they don't give in, but they're strengthened by your word and strengthened by your love and strengthened by your power. That they don't accept the lies, they don't accept defeat, but they get up and they walk out triumphantly, God. Cause them to overcome in this season anytime they find themselves in a situation such as this. God, I thank you for power. I thank you for your love. And I thank you for an opportunity to be used to minister to these individuals in the name of Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. So I pray that someone is blessed, someone is helped. Um, like I said, if God gives me more revelation and information on this topic, I'm happy to come back and to share. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you feel that I just need someone to talk to. I am happy to to talk with you and to, to make some time uh, for you. Most important thing is to know that God is there with you and you're not alone. You don't have to be alone. You're never alone. So first and foremost, talk to your heavenly father and ask him for strength and his guidance and direction. And if he should lead you to his, his little daughter, Faith, I'm happy to... Um, to help you as well. So God bless you guys. I've been on here for almost an hour. Thank you to everyone who took some time to um, stop in on this uh, Saturday, June 20th, just to be a part of the conversation. And I look forward to um, talking with you all soon and reaching out and connecting. Have a blessed rest of your day and a wonderful and triumphant weekend. God bless. Love you guys.